Hello everyone, I'm Connor, and today I'll be presenting the solution to the Yusuko February 2024 Silver Contest Problem 2 Test Tubes. In this problem, we are given that we have these two test tubes filled with two different colors of liquid, and we also have this beaker, and we want to try and do a sequence of pores so that we sort the two liquids into the two test tubes. So for instance, one pour we could do is you can pour all the blue liquid from this first test tube into the beaker. And any pour we do moves all the same color of liquid at the top of a test tube into the beaker or whatever other. We can also pour from a test tube to test tube. So let's, con let's continue with this sample here. So when the next move we can do is we can pour all the blue liquid from this test tube into the beaker. And then we can pour all the orange liquid from this test tube into the other test tube. And finally, we can pour all the blue liquid from the beaker into the first test tube. And notice that we're able to pour multiple units of liquid at once. As long as it's all the same color, you can pour multiple units of liquid into all at once. And this solution for this sample here took us four pours. And we want to find, try and find the solution that takes the minimum number of pores. So how do we solve this problem? Well, solving this problem mostly boils down to just finding a strategy that works and then being able to print it. So I encourage you to think for a little bit on your own about some strategies before I explain the strategy I used. So pause and think about it for a little bit. Okay. Now that you've hopefully paused for a little while to think about a solution, let's go over what I did. So the main observation we can make is that whenever you have one color under another color, for instance, we have this blue here under this orange, then that means that we'll have to pour out this orange at some point. We'll have to pour out the top color at some point. So my solution takes advantage of the colors that are currently at the bottom of the test tubes. For instance, there's blue at the bottom of this test tube, and there's orange at the bottom of this test tube. Because we're guaranteed that we'll never have to pour out either of these colors, it's because uh, there's no different color beneath them. Of course, if, one of the, if the colors at the bottom of the test tubes are the same, then we will have to pour out one of them. So let's take a look at this slightly different example case here. So for my solution, First, I must choose a test tube that we're going to operate on first. And I was a bit lazy here. Um, I actually tried choosing either one of them, and I solved it for both of them, and then I found which one was the minimum. So in this case, choosing the second test tube as our first turns out to be optimal. But in, in my solution, I checked both of them. So now we're just going to try and empty this beaker as much as possible. So first, we want to empty uh, this blue off the top. So we're going to empty this into test tube one because test tube one already has blue at this top, so it doesn't really matter. Um, next, we're going to get rid of this orange and we're going to put that into the beaker. That's so we can make room for this other stuff and it's kind of pointless putting it on top of the first test tube because then we'll just have to pour it off again at some point. And now here's where my a uh, solution takes a little bit of an unintuitive decision. We actually don't pour off the blue at the top of this test tube, because if we look at this other test tube, we're going to have to put somewhere, we're going to have to put all this blue somewhere, and if we're pouring this off onto it, then we'll just have to move it again. So it's kind of pointless removing this blue from the second test tube, and instead we're just going to skip straight in into looking at the first test tube. And for that one, we want to pour the blue on top of here, merging it with this blue here. Then we're going to take this orange, pour it into the beaker, and now we can get rid of all this blue in this second test too. And then finally we can pour all the orange from the beaker into the second test too. So yeah, this is my solution. And this took six moves. So of course, this is only the solution for this specific test case. 
But the general idea of the solution is that we want to be always merging colors as much as possible, because if we ever spend a move where we don't merge a color, then that's a move that we probably could have avoided, since it's just the equivalent of moving a color around. So we always want to pour a color on top of the same color, that way we merge them. Another main idea of the solution is we want to keep space on top of the beakers for either color. Um, we don't want any case where we want to move blue solution into one of the other ones, but both of them have orange on top. So that means that we have nowhere to put it that merges the color. So we want to always keep space on top for either color. Let's take a more high level view of my solution. So essentially my solution comes down to three different phases. In the first phase, we're trying to almost empty the first test tube. So in this phase, we take the first test tube and we want to almost empty it. So this entails that we take the color that's the same as the second test tube and put it all onto there. So first we take this blue, put it on top of the second test tube because there's already blue there. We want to take the different color, in this case it's orange since we have blue on top of the second test tube, and we put that one in the beaker. And we keep doing this until we're almost at the bottom. So in this case that would look something like this. And we leave one blue at the bottom so that we have somewhere for these blues at the top of the second test tube to go because we can't just put those on top of the oranges in the beaker. That would be a waste of a move. Now for phase two, we want to sort the second test tube. So in this case, we want to first take all of these blues at the top of the second test tube, and then move those into the first test tube, since there's already blue there. And then we just start sorting. So we move this orange to, oops, we move this orange to the beaker, we move that blue to the first test tube, and we keep going until it's at the bottom. And then once we've done that, we move on to our third phase where we just fix the beaker. So in this case, the beaker has all of the orange ones. So then we just simply pour all of those into the orange test tube. And yeah, that's the high level overview of what our solution does. So let's take a look at the code to solve it. So here's the C++ code that solves this problem. So first thing we can see is that we have this solve function up here, and this solve function we run twice, actually. Uh, we run it first with the first test tube in the first spot, second test tube in the second spot, and we run it a second time with the test tube swap. And then we have these other numbers just to indicate which one is which. So here's the solve function. So first thing we do is we find the first index that uh, is different because we're not actually sure whether one of the test tubes is actually uh, all in one color yet. If it's all one color, then this is a kind of a special case because then we can just empty all the other color into there and then that makes uh, for a much easier solution. So first we check to see if it's all one color and we can see that if there's no point at which the colors differ. So in this case, we would just go through the second beaker, or the second test tube. We'd find all of the different colors, and the colors is the same as the, as the whole color test tube. Then we put that into the first test tube. Otherwise, we put it into the beaker, and then at the end, we just put the beaker back into the other test tube. So this is a little bit of a special case. Um, so back to the main case. Uh, this first part is phase one, which is where we want to almost empty the first test tube. So in this case, we want to just keep going through all the colors. We want to check if the top of the second test tube is equal to the current color we're looking at. If so, then we could move the current color onto uh, the second test tube. Otherwise, we move the current color into the beaker, and then we can set this beaker color. Uh, this part of the code is for phase two, where you want to empty the second beaker or the second test tube. So what we do for that is we check to see uh, if the beaker color is matching the currently current color, then we uh, add all that color to the beaker. Otherwise, we add it to the first test tube. And then this last one uh, is the phase three, where we empty the beaker. So uh, in that one, we'll have to put
push the extra color from on top of the first test tube into the second test tube, and then push uh, the bigger color into the first test tube. And then we'll have to do some other additional fixes to the colors. So yeah, this is my solution to problem B. There's just a little bit of extra stuff for like printing out the solution and making sure that you take into account that it doesn't always want you to print the solution. So yep, that's my solution for problem two. Thank you for watching.